Hello, I'm uh, Dr. John Liske. I'm a nephrologist here at uh, Mayo Clinic Rochester, and uh, I specialize in uh, the diagnosis and treatment of patients with uh, kidney stone disease. So your first question uh, might be, why do we really care about um, kidney stone disease? It turns out that it's a really very common condition. It affects somewhere on the order of 10% of people in the United States over their lifetime, so very common. And unfortunately, for those people who have kidney stones, it tends to be fairly recurrent, meaning they get many kidney stones over time during their lifetime. And unfortunately, again, every one of those kidney stones tends to be very painful, so it can lead to things like going to the emergency room for treatment of the stone, having a lot of pain. Oftentimes, uh, this is considered one of the most painful events someone would have in their lifetime. So if, if the stone is too big, it may not pass on its own, and so this may require further treatments and things such as stents, so little tubes that go up into the kidney to drain the kidney until the stone can be removed or pass on its own. If the stone is too big to pass on its own, eventually this may require surgery. Uh, so a urologist would have to come evaluate the patient and eventually do procedures that may be relatively small or even relatively big ones that involve open surgeries to, to, to cut open the kidney and remove the stone. So in the end, it can lead to a lot of bad things that um, we would like not to have happen. We mentioned that kidney stones are fairly common. They affect a lot of people. Um, the... Uh, there's not a lot of expertise out there as far as the diagnosis and treatment of them, that the causes are very complicated. In certain individuals, this involves genetic factors, so quite commonly there'll be too much calcium in the urine, as an example, or too much oxalate. And then quite often, um, there'll be uh, dietary or other lifestyle factors, so the things that we eat and the activities that we do can impact how likely we are to get a kidney stone. And in given people, oftentimes these things come together, and that's why they get a kidney stone. And it really takes somebody who's familiar in the area to look at these factors, to do the appropriate workup, um, and then to come up with an individualized treatment plan. Often this would require collecting a urine for a day or two so that we can average out what's in your urine, doing a detailed history, uh, determining what kinds of stones you have. If you do ever pass a stone, it's very important to collect that, and then we would send that for analysis. And then using all that information together, coming up with uh, what we think is the best prevention treatment going forward. Uh, we have here in uh, the, the Division of Nephrology and Hypertension a group of four or five nephrologists who are very interested in kidney stone disease uh, that uh, specialize in this and are very expert in interpreting and coming up with uh, appropriate treatment plans. Uh, if you're unfortunate and your stone is too big, and requires surgical intervention. We're also very fortunate here at Mayo. We have a very um, good urology department and um, several of the urologists that specialize and uh, do this as a large part of their practice as far as seeing patients with large kidney stones and doing the most minimally invasive procedures that are necessary to remove the stone so that we don't affect your kidney function going forward and you have the quickest uh, recovery time possible. Here at Mayo, um, are very interested in kidney stone research moving forward. Uh, even though we know a lot about why kidney stones form, uh, we certainly don't know everything, and it, there is a lot of work left to be done. We have um, an NIH-funded uh, O'Brien Urology Research Center that's devoted to kidney stone research. The center involves many different specialties, so we have uh, nephrologists and uh, urologists and then also radiologists working on the latest imaging techniques to see stones at their earliest um, time points possible and also what they're made of. Uh, we have physiologists and geneticists working on uh, factors that might predispose people to kidney stones. And this group is really working very closely together at all aspects of kidney stone disease to try to understand why they form, how to diagnose them, and how best to treat them. Most of the kidney stones, the 10% that affect the, the population, obviously are not rare, so that those are very common causes of kidney stones. But there are other subtypes that are rarer and potentially more important. You know, examples of that might be primary hyperoxaluria or dent disease. Um, these uh, can be easily confused with the more common kind of kidney stone. And uh, unfortunately, these types of rare kidney stones are more likely to lead to kidney damage in the long term. 
So it becomes very important to not only recognize them, but also treat them appropriately. And that's really what our, our Rare Kidney Stone Consortium is, is working towards, and we have lots of experience here. Seeing those sorts of patients, uh, diagnosing them, and getting them on a, a appropriate treatment plan moving forward. So in summary, I, I think that Mayo Clinic Rochester is an ideal place to come for evaluation of treatment of your stones. We offer a team approach that involves both nephrology and urology, as well as dietitians to try to, number one, figure out what's causing your stones and get you on the right treatment plan for prevention. And then, if necessary, we have the necessary surgical expertise to address any uh, stones that you already have in your kidney. Um, all the times we offer a team approach that would hopefully get you through as easily as possible this potentially very painful condition. Thank you.